Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so in the last video, we, we tackled the OU structure in Active Directory to kind of get it staged for our implementation of our group policy. In this video, we're going to focus on configuring group policy so that way we can start to add our policies to the actual system. I'll, in, I'll include a, a link in the description as to where to go to download the CIS benchmarks. Um, you're going to need that for this part, so pause the video, grab the stuff out of the description, um, get it onto the server, unzip it, and then, uh, re, you know, hit play. So, all right, so now that you've gotten the actual file, I, I put the file in my system, in the C drive, in tools, in build, and here's the STIG GPO package for January 2024. Now, when you go there, you may have a later date. That's totally okay. It doesn't change how this works, so it'll work the exact same way. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to want to do now is we're going to leave this folder open and we're going to open another one <clears throat> and we're going to go to the local C drive to Windows um, and we're going to go to policy definitions and in here this is the default location for all group policy configuration on a 2012 R2 and newer server and I say the default location because if you're still running legacy stuff it's probably in a folder in your sysvol. Um, that was the way you used to do it in the Windows 2000, 2003, and 2008 days. That doesn't work anymore with Windows 10 and Windows 11. If those policies don't exist in this policy location, the replication won't work on your domain controllers. The replication won't work to your clients correctly. You'll be missing folders. You'll be missing configuration. And you'll have all sorts of issues. So this folder does exist. If this folder exists and this folder is empty, you're gonna need a copy of these policies, these default policies, not including the ones I'm gonna put in here, but the default ones that exist in here. You're gonna need a copy of these policies to put inside of that actual folder to fix that issue. And the easiest way to do that is fresh build. So if you haven't done that, you don't have a fresh build, if you follow the 2019 server build instructions uh, in, uh, that started this, this series, um, you'll be able to get to this point where you'll have these files because these files are necessary in order for your domain configuration to work. All right, so going forward, what we're going to do is we're going to open this folder. And in this folder, we're going to have a bunch of information. Um, you're going to see Department of Defense. Um, that's because the DOD is the one that actually puts this CIS benchmark together. Uh, they work with the NIST configurations to build a template for your group policy configurations. This template will get you started on your NIST compliance build for your C3PAO uh, compliance tests. You want to start from this. You don't want to start from crap that you built or did yourself five, ten years ago because if you have to redo all of these things manually, it's going to take you forever. So just don't make it harder than it has to be. Grab these things and if you have to, you could create a staging policy to put the stuff in so you could test it. But this is the information you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the ADMX templates. We're going to have the uh, variable listings in here. So we're going to open up Adobe. We're going to have ADMX files in here. And if we go in e ENUS or English US, again, if you're not from here and you want some other language, I, I don't know where to grab those, but these are for the ENUS. Um, we're going to grab the, the ADML files are your, your language files. Those you're going to copy into the ADML folder, which is the ENUS folder under your policy definitions. So we literally just grab these, copy them, and paste them. They appear here. So now we have the language files. But we don't have them here. So we go back to Adobe, and we grab these and copy them. And we paste them in. There they are. So now we have the ADMX files. Um, so we're going to do that on every single one of these. We're going to grab these, copy them, paste We're going to grab the language files, copy them, paste, and grab the ones from Microsoft, copy them, paste, and so on and so forth. So once we have all these files done, if you go into start, and go into group policy management. Now, keep this in mind, there, there could be a timer 
So sometimes it requires you to reboot in order to get these policies to become active. Sometimes they just become active. It's not, it's, there's a 15 minute interval where it will refresh itself. Um, generally speaking, I would just reboot. You can restart the services. It's not worth it. The server shouldn't take that long to reboot, especially if it's a, if it's a hypervisor. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the group policy objects um, and we're gonna right click and we're gonna do new and we're just gonna call it new group policy object. It doesn't make any difference what it is. Select it, right click and choose edit. Um, we're gonna choose policies and we're gonna choose administrative templates and here you go, Adobe Reader and Adobe Acrobat. So these are the two policies we literally just added into the uh, into that folder, into the policy definitions. There's our Adobe and then we also have Google. So then we have Chrome, these are the Chrome policies. Now keep in mind these uh, ADMX files, they have to be updated. You, you have to follow this. So you don't have to do it all the time, but it's a good practice to get into to update this once a year. So that way you have the latest configuration, the latest builds and the latest support because Microsoft releases updates that changes the policies. And if you don't have the updated policies, then they don't work correctly on your operating system. Now it's supported under mainstream support and updates. So now that 2019 is technically not mainstream support, you would need the 2022 ADMX and ADML files in order to maintain the policy configuration to support your Windows 11 machines on anything past 23H2 build number. So when they release the next build for Windows 11, if you don't have those policy changes in place, you can't natively support it on your 2019 server. You shouldn't be running later clients than you have your server configuration. I realize that that's something that most companies don't realize. Most IT companies don't realize it either, is that if you don't have the matching policies, you could cause issues with the clients. So then in some cases, actually in most cases, I would suggest having a Windows 2022 server installed uh, with the domain controller configured, doing nothing. Just get updates every now and then, grab those ADMX files and copy them over and they will work fine. Matter of fact, they work fine in Windows 2012 R2 as well. So if you imported 2022 ADMX and ADML files into a 2012 R2 server, you could natively support Windows 11 without any issue. Um, it's not technically supported, but it does work. Um, at any rate, so that's, that's what we could see here is specifically what we imported into the ADMX and ADML files. So I'm gonna stop this recording here. I'm gonna have you guys finish copying those files into that location and when you're done, reboot the server. Uh, hopefully you guys will continue on on the next portion of our group policy configuration when we go over the importing of the CIS benchmarks. All right guys, like and subscribe. Any questions, comments, any uh, issues, anything you guys need, feel free to leave it in the comments. Hopefully I'll help you out and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.